got here, um, when I started my podcast, the Trauma Therapist Podcast, I knew nothing about podcasting, um, nothing about interviewing, and not that it's rocket science, of course, but the need to get the word out about trauma um, kind of outweighed any fear I had, any trepidation I had. Uh, I had been working in a clinic in Northern California, and we were working with young kids who were showing early signs of psychosis. 99.9% .9 of those individuals had undetected trauma, unrecognized trauma, either by themselves or by their parents or by their therapists sometimes. And it got to me because, and I don't think I realized it as much at the time because my own bullying that I'd experienced when I was young didn't realize the impact that that had on me, you know, the charge that it had on me. Uh, and how that served to propel me to do this podcast. I uh, was working at this first job, seeing clients, um, learning a lot about what I didn't know, trying to be this idealized um, sense of a, a, a you know a therapist. I just got my degree, and I was just not myself. I was trying to prove something, not just to myself, but to the people around me. And that goes back, you know, years too. But all that got in the way. It wasn't until I started doing the podcast and started interviewing seasoned therapists and finding out, um, you know, one of the questions I'd ask was um, share an early clinical error and what you learned from it. And I thought it was going to be about the fact that they didn't know an intervention or forgot an intervention or a technique, et cetera, et cetera. But it was all about this kind of um, disruption in their interpersonal process or journey or authenticity and not being, allowing themselves to be themselves. And, and one of my guests, Manuela Mishka Reeds, uh, uses the term human beingness, not allowing their human beingness to come forth. That to me has been the kind of explosion in excitement and importance, I think, for what I'm doing now and what I hope the podcast is about because it's kind of allowed me a certain freedom to be myself. And I was able to take that to my work when I was working at the clinic and freed up a lot of energy. And this whole process of, this whole journey of trusting oneself as a therapist, as a coach, as a survivor, as a person, as a father, um, is daunting, is challenging, is exciting because it allows, I feel it allows me to be myself, right? And I don't have to have all the answers. And as a therapist, if you're a therapist or whatever, you certainly don't need to have all the answers and don't have all the answers. But I think once you are allowed to let that go, it allows a lot of freedom and creativity. All right, I hope you're having a great weekend. Um, and that's it, that's all I wanted to say. This process is, um, uh, for me, continuing to do the podcast. I think I'm, I'm doing this today because my wife, we were sitting around the table after breakfast and she said, you know, how long do you think you're gonna be doing this? Not in a judgmental way, but just as a matter of fact way. And I said, I think I'm gonna have, you know, my own business and some form of this for as long as I can. And uh, that made me think about, well, what does that mean? What am I gonna do? And this is it, you know? uncovering the core of who we are as therapists, as, as parents, as survivors, as individuals, because that is where I think love comes in and the power comes in and the power of the therapeutic relationship and any relationship comes into play. Have an awesome weekend.